There's something that's making the rounds here, specifically in Philadelphia, and I just wanted to read this here to you guys. Um, those of you who aren't Eagles fans may not particularly care about this, but an open letter was sent to uh, a local reporter, a reporter here for the ABC Six Channel Six affiliate here in um, Philadelphia, named Deuces Rogers. Um, that's the reporter, a fan by the name of Nick. I don't want to say his full name, but I'll leave a link in the video description to everything that Deuces Rogers uh, posted here on his Facebook page. Uh, and this was an open letter written to Jeffrey Lurie. And Nick's a huge fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, and this summed up exactly how I feel. Now, I don't relate to certain circumstances of Nick, of him being a father of two kids and like a couple things like that, but so much of what Nick said just hit home to me, and maybe people understand why Philadelphia fans are so fanatical, crazy, whatever you want to say. And I just, anyways, I just want to read this to you. An open letter to Mr. Lurie and the Philadelphia Eagles. <coughs> also, sorry, I still got a cold here. Dear Mr. Lurie, I write this approximately 24 hours after, after the Eagles season ended. Oh, I know there's another game to play, but for all intents and purposes, the 2015 season came to an end last night at Lincoln Financial Field in an ugly, ugly loss to the Washington Redskins. Do you know that the Eagles finished the year 3-5 and five in the friendly confines of the link? I'm betting you do. The once great home field advantage the Eagles enjoyed has long since vanished. It's very sad. I am a 28-year-old single father of two. I work many hours a week for very little money in order to support my two beautiful sons. Do you know what helps me get through my week? The thought that on Sunday afternoon, for three hours, I get to watch my football team take to the field of battle, playing the game that I love. I save money all year long so that I can afford to get to at least one game a year in your beautiful palace. This year, however, due to a health circumstance of one of my younger sons, I wasn't able to get to a game. It turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Three and five at home? I'm glad I didn't make it. For the second year in a row, I now have to watch postseason football that doesn't include my team. My brother is a Giants fan, my best friend is a Cowboys fan, fuck him, and while, and, while, and while their teams aren't in the tournament either, they can still look back fondly on teams of the past. I don't have that luxury. I have my many better luck next year memories, but I can't go back in my memory bank to a time my team finally reached the apex of the football world. What a ma what a man what a maddening feeling I almost said meandering to think back on decades of futility breaks my heart as it does for the better part of the Delaware Valley for a guy like me there isn't much I can do to facilitate change in your franchise after all I'm just a quote fan what do I know that's the attitude your players have quote we all we got wasn't that the rallying cry for them as they finished the polishing turd that was the 2015 season? 53 angry men? What about the thousands of angrier fans? We all we got. What a disrespectful thing to say. What about the legions of faithful that live and die on Sunday afternoons? What about the guys like me that work hard all week and save all year to go to a game? You have built a stadium that makes it very hard for people like me to go. In order to get through the gates to watch the game, it costs upwards of $100 per ticket. And this is after $40 for parking. Have you ever thought that maybe this is why the home field advantage is gone? You have built a palace that only business execs and upper class can afford to go to without a struggle. You've taken the true fan and told him that he's not important anymore, that all you care about is making as much money as possible. It's sickening. And then even, and excuse me, and yet, even knowing all that, I save and scrape and struggle to put some money away so that I can still go to the building once a year to watch a game. How lucky you are, people like me. 
There, how lucky you are that people like me care the way we do. You have installed a coach who doesn't care about people like me. He is ignorant, moody, uncompromising, controlling, and pig-headed. He believes his way is the only way, and he refuses to acknowledge that maybe, just maybe, he doesn't know all there is to know about being a coach in the NFL. Does he not realize that the media that he finds so reproachable is the gateway to the fan? The reporters are asking questions and writing stories to keep us, the fan, informed. He, him disrespecting guys like Jeff McLean, Les Bowen, and Howard Eskin is really him disrespecting me. How does the man who believes he is the smartest guy in the city not realize this? Even Andy Reid, for as boring as he was, wasn't so arrogant and disrespectful, and the resume he put together is worlds greater than anything Chip Kelly will ever accomplish as the coach of the Eagles. Speaking of Andy, he's clinched a playoff berth. He's only managed that because he signed Jeremy Macklin in the offseason. You remember Macklin? He's the wide receiver that your coach neglected to call back because he was too busy. Macklin should have been Sam Bradford's number one target this season, not Alex Smith's. Evan Mathis should have been protecting Bradford instead of Alan Barbary. LaShawn McCoy should have been taking handoffs from Bradford instead of DeMarco Murray. But because your coach slash GM believes that he is the smartest man in all of football, all the talent we once rooted for and loved now lives in other cities. What a disgrace. How were you fooled into believing these were the right moves to make? Kelly must be a hell of a salesman. Culture may beat scheme, but in the NFL, nothing trumps talent. Even a peon like me knows that. How can your coach possibly be unaware of this? How could you have let him tear down a team that was good and make them worse than mediocre? You are the last line of defense for the fan against this egomaniacal fraud that you put in charge. After 20 years as an owner, you must know enough to not allow him to do this. And yet, he was allowed to have free reign and he destroyed my team. He ruined my fall. He ruined my year. He ruined the year for hundreds of thousands of fans like me who work many hours a week for very little money who live for Sundays. I don't know what to do. Please give me some guidance. Please give me some hope. I long for the days of Andy and Donovan. At least I knew we were going to the playoffs even though those seasons ended in failure, at least they were a fun ride. This mess, this is truly a disaster. The sadness that I feel will linger until next September. And because Kelly doesn't know how to judge talent or take the advice of older and wiser football minds, I know that next year will be just as mediocre. I'm defeated. I've given up. Your franchise has become the laughing stock of the NFL. I am embarrassed to be part of it. I hope that in the future, you see the error in Chip's ways and correct the mistake you made by putting him in charge. But like an addict, I will continue to scrape and save to be able to attend one game in 2016. That should be some comfort to you because filling your palace is all you seem to care about. And saps like me will continue to oblige. Have a happy new year. Nick. Nick, I'm not even going to try to add anything to that other than you summed it up perfectly. Summed it up perfectly. So anyways, that's just a little introspective of what it's like to be a Philadelphia Eagles football fan. And many of us realize Everything that Nick said in his letter is 100% true. Some may have more hope for this team. Some may have less hope. Others may be exactly what people like me and Nick feel. But it's just something I wanted to share with you guys. Have a good day, everyone.